Hi YouTube, this is Evie. Welcome back to my channel and today I am continuing my ongoing December series that is all about how to get involved in the real life BDSM community. And this particular video is not actually one that I had planned on filming as part of this series but I thought it was going to be really important. Uh, somebody actually brought up in the comment sections on one of my last videos the Meet My Dom video which you can click on down below if you haven't seen it yet. And they basically asked for an example of scene negotiation and I realized I do have an older video that I think is maybe like six or seven months old that is about negotiation and contracts but I don't have one that's specifically geared for how to negotiate for a scene and if you are first getting involved in BDSM and you want to pick up plays at parties knowing how to negotiate is so 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 important so I'm going to go ahead and dedicate this video to that topic. Now I am going to be gearing this video specifically towards those who don't have a lot of experience in BDSM, who don't have a lot of experience doing play in real life, and maybe don't necessarily have a very good understanding of what they're interested in exactly what kinds of scenes they may like. Now if you have an established partnership with somebody, if you have a play partner that you have just had scenes with a lot, or you just happen to be very very experienced at whatever type of scene you are negotiating for, the rules may be a little bit different. Not everybody, especially once they have an established partnership does like full-on negotiation for every single scene that they do. I personally don't. Normally when my dom and I negotiate for a scene we kind of just throw ideas back and forth at each other and see what sounds good and then if something needs to be changed in the moment we communicate that with each other but we don't sit down and like have a really long conversation every single time that we want to have a scene happen. Now, the first thing that I would recommend that you do, and I would say this is almost a requirement if you want to play and you want to play safely, is you need to vet that person. And what I mean by that is you need to ask that person either for referrals for other submissives that they've played with so that way you can ask them about how their scenes went before you actually play with this person. Or you can ask other people that you know in the community, hey, I'm interested in playing in so with so-and-so. Have you heard anything about them? Have you ever seen them do any scenes before? What's their reputation like? You can also ask other dominants who are maybe part of the same wheelhouse slash genre. So let's say uh, you are interested in playing with a particular rope top. You can ask other rope tops that you know, like, hey, do you know so-and-so? Is he a good rigger? Blah, blah, blah. And that should give you a good idea if this person is actually somebody you should want to play with. Now, when you are speaking to other submissives about scenes that they've done with this particular person, uh, one, it can be a sensitive topic and they may not want to disclose a lot of information about the particular scene that they've done because for a lot of people, a lot of BDSM scenes are really personal and private. And you should take what they say with a grain of salt and you should be kind of able to filter out what are red flags and warning signs and what maybe isn't something to be worried about. What I mean by that is there are red flags to be aware of and there are things you should be able to look out for like people who don't listen to safe words, people who uh, violate consent, people who do things in scene that haven't been negotiated for beforehand, people who change the nature of the scene without communicating with the submissive what is going on, not being prepared let's say for example in a rope scene with the appropriate safety equipment or not being prepared in a blood or a knife play scene with the appropriate sanitization or the sanitization equipment, those are all red flags to be aware of. But while you're talking to other submissives and vetting this potential dom or top that you want to play with, sometimes they can communicate their displeasure with a scene that they've done and it has absolutely nothing to do with the process of negotiation and it's something that actually went wrong in terms of consent violation or you know something that would actually be a red flag to be concerned about. Sometimes scenes happen and they don't turn out how they get pictured in people's heads and it's just two people don't work well together and it's not necessarily a red flag that you shouldn't play with this person. It just means that they didn't have a particularly enjoyable scene together even though everything was good in terms of consent and negotiation. Now if you're meeting somebody at a play party and you're watching them do a scene and you would be interested in doing a scene with them after that scene is completed, one, I would watch very closely to that scene that they are doing to see how they communicate in scene, see what their aftercare is like, see you know, just how they conduct themselves as a dominant or top and how they treat their bottoms or submissives, which can change between play partners, so do be aware of that. But at the very least, watch somebody play if you can, if you don't have any other way to vet them because you just are so new to the scene you don't even know who to talk to. At least, again, at the very least, please at least watch them do a scene or have a lot of very in-depth communication about previous scenes that they've done. Now, just as a quick disclaimer, I am talking about scene negotiation in terms of somebody 
who is negotiating a scene for a public play space, like a dungeon where there are going to be dungeon monitors around to make sure everything is on the up and up. You're going to want to make sure you are more careful and are more stringent about what you are okay playing with and who you're okay playing with. If you are in a, a private setting, like a house party, or you are alone with a dominant, I would never recommend playing with somebody for the first time alone just at their house or at your house because even if you vet them and they do have a good reputation, sometimes things do go wrong and sometimes things aren't talked about and sometimes, you know, you just never know and you should be safe, okay? Now, if you do want to negotiate with somebody, there are sort of two or three main ways I would suggest talking to this person and approaching negotiation. If you are interested in doing a scene with them, just tell them that. Let them know that you have, like, you know, I, you know, just saw your scene that you did. It was really hot and amazing, and I would be interested in doing a scene with you in the future like that. I have talked to so-and-so, and they told me that you were a really good dom for this type of play, you know, would you be available to do a scene in the future or tonight at this party or whatever it is. Uh, you can also approach it like let's say you see somebody on FetLife that you're interested in playing with and you can send them a message. I would not necessarily open a communication with somebody off the bat saying I want to do a scene with you because again that can it feels like you're using somebody and you're not really interested in getting to know them as a person and getting to know them as a kinkster. So don't necessarily jump right in and be like, I want to do a scene with you. Like, get to know this person first because you should at the very least be able to have, like, pleasant conversation with this person before you jump in and do a scene with them. But when you do approach them for negotiation, hopefully you've said, like, yeah, I'm available to do a scene either later tonight or maybe another time at a different party. And you can set up a time like either later on in the future, maybe at a public place, like at a coffee shop, or maybe later on that same day if you're at a public party and you're negotiating for something that's going to happen that particular day. They, they might say like, yeah, I'm available to do a scene later. I just need to like finish cleaning up all my stuff or I want to take a break and like get some water or whatever. Then we can sit down and like talk together about what kind of scene you want to do. When you actually sit down and talk about what kind of scene you would do, try to keep the scope as narrow as possible when you're first starting out because you don't want to be surprised by something, especially when you're new. If you want to do an impact scene, I think it is a very smart idea to specify what kind of impact scene you want to do, what kind of pain level you want to play around with, and what kind of implements you're okay with using. So, for example, if you just say, I want to do an impact scene, that might mean you get punched, that might mean you get caned, that might mean you get flogged, that might mean you have some kind of electro play flogger on your ass. Like, that can mean a very wide variety of things to a lot of different pops. So, if at all possible, be very specific with the kind of thing you want to have happen in your scene. Like, for me, for example, I was negotiating an impact play scene recently, and I told the dom or the top I was going to be playing with, I... We want to do an impact scene with you. These are the kinds of toys I am okay with being used. This is what my pain tolerance level is like. These are the areas of my body that are okay to hit. These are the areas of my body that are not okay to hit. Make sure you tell them about any sort of medical conditions that you have. Make sure you tell them about any kind of body piercings that you have because it would be a terrible thing if you have a belly button piercing or something and you're getting whipped and they're doing this back and forth thing and the whip wraps around your stomach, which shouldn't happen by the way, but it can happen by accident, so they should be consciously aware of that as a thing. And if it like hits your piercing, uh, not only could that be incredibly painful, it could cause you to have to permanently remove and retire that piercing, which would just be such a downer, and I don't want that to happen to anybody. So let them know any medical conditions, any piercings that you have, any concerns that you have. You should also make sure that you talk about what kind of equipment you want to use and what you picture sort of the feeling for the scene to be like. So let's say you want to do an impact scene and you want it to have where your like wrists are tied above your head like this. Or maybe you want to be tied to a spanking bench. Talk about what kind of positions would be comfortable for you to be in as part of an impact play scene for a long period of time. Because keep in mind you're probably going to have to keep this pose for a while anywhere between like five minutes if it's a really short scene or an hour if you're going to be going at it for a very long time. So make sure you pick something that's comfortable and sustainable for you. 
At the same time, you should always make sure that you open up space when you're communicating with this potential dom or this potential top for things that they like to see in a scene. Because believe it or not, tops and doms have preferences and limits too. So you should always make sure that you communicate with them and ask them about what kinds of things they like to do, and what kinds of impact they like to do, and what kind of scene energy they like to bring. Because different doms and different tops bring different kinds of energies to a scene. And it's kind of hard to explain what that's like until you actually have some experience with scenes but some doms are like very like primal and they're almost like kind of animalistic some are like very like sensual and soft like some are very kind of like caring and daddy like or mommy like like the range of energy that a top can bring to a scene is very individual and it's kind of like they are bringing their own personality out during the scene and the same thing happens for submissives as well because different submissives have very different personalities and very different ways of taking pain and when you are negotiating you want to make sure that you communicate with the dominant how you take pain what kind of methods you use if you can verbalize what they are for when you're um, taking and processing pain what kind of things help you process pain how you know try to communicate with the dominant um, how you deal with pain and what things can help you so for example when I have impact scenes I cry for some people that's really hot some people that freaks out so I always make sure that I tell someone before I do an impact scene with them like hey after I take a certain level of pain I'm probably gonna start tearing up and I'm probably gonna start crying it's not a bad thing it doesn't mean that I'm not enjoying the scene it probably actually means I like it pretty well but you should check in with me anyways just to make sure if you don't know what your reaction is going to be like, make sure you tell them. So, for example, you're like, I've never really done, like, an impact play scene before. I'm really interested in it. I think it's going to be really fun, but I'm not really sure how I'm going to process pain. And I want you to be aware of that because some people go totally silent. And that's not necessarily a good thing because a lot of doms, I wouldn't say require, but it, they find it very helpful to have a lot of communication from the bottom because that tells them, what their pain tolerance is at and how much they're enjoying whatever particular kind of location or impact toy that they're using is. Um, you also, you know, if you don't know how you process pain, you don't know where your pain tolerance level is at, make sure you tell them that as well. As always in negotiation, please, 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 please be honest. Do not try to make yourself out to be the world's biggest pain bottom because if that is not going to end well for you. You are not going to have a good scene. Doms are not going to judge you if you are not able to take a certain level of pain. They're going to judge you and not want to play with you again if you tell them that you're the world's biggest pain bottom and you love being whipped until you bleed when you can't even handle a rabbit for flogger. That is going to make people not want to play with you anymore because you are negotiating and telling people that you're okay with things even when you're really not and that puts a dominant or a top in a very difficult place because they're the ones who are supposed to be conducting the scene. Make sure you also communicate not only what kind of scene you want to do, what kind of implements you want to use. You also want to talk about how long you want it to be. Do you want it to be a quick five minute scene where you just kind of get a taste of what it's like? Or do you want to have like a really intense hour long scene? It can be kind of hard, especially in the moment, to gauge how much time is passing. But having sort of a rough estimate for how long you want a scene to last is a really good thing, especially if you haven't played with the person before. You also want to make sure... And this is almost the most important thing to talk about and as far as I'm concerned is aftercare. Always, always, always talk about aftercare expectations because they can be very different from, from person to person and scene to scene. Now you may not know what kind of aftercare you need and that's fine. Communicate that to your dom or your top if you don't know what you need for aftercare. But you should talk about it. Talk about your expectations. So for example, if you are the kind of submissive that needs to be cuddled for 30 minutes after a five minute scene, make sure they know that because they might have plans to leave after the scene right away. They may have other people that they are planning on playing with. They may need a break themselves because sometimes tops, after they do a scene in order to calm down, they need space away from the scene and they may not necessarily be available for a lot of uh, personal touchy-feely interaction. Although, at least in my experience, it isn't super common, but I know that it does happen. You have very mismatched ideas about what good aftercare looks like and what kind of aftercare you need. It doesn't necessarily mean you can't do a scene together, but you do need to be aware of it and you need to be able to talk to each other so that way you can work out the differences. So for example, if you are the kind of submissive that needs 30 minutes of cuddles after a five minute scene, maybe you can get a friend to provide those cuddles. Maybe you can have one of the top's assistants or like another top that you know 
as well can provide that aftercare for you. So that way they can do what they need to do. Because again, sometimes tops need space to kind of process and unwind after a scene because it is very emotionally intense for tops and doms as well. And always keep in mind if you are negotiating a scene that sometimes things might not go as planned. So for example, if you have decided you want to do a 15 minute long over the knee spanking scene and then you go to the play party and it turns out that there is no chair or bench or anywhere to sit on that's available for an over the knee spanking scene, you might have to change plans. This doesn't necessarily mean that you should like just completely go ham and forget everything you guys negotiated but make sure you come back together you can talk about it like let's say that situation just happened to you you can be like oh man i know we were planning on doing like an over the knees spanking scene but it doesn't look like there's anywhere else available what else would you want to do instead so you can re open up the floor for more negotiation and figure out maybe a different but similar scene that you want to do based on what's actually available at that particular time now, if you actually get into a scene that you've negotiated, like let's say you're having that 15 minute long over the knee spanking scene, and like three minutes into it, you're like, this is not working for me, this is not what I want. One, you can always use red, and make sure you do talk about safe words, and I can't believe I have a message to death, but talk about safe words, talk about safe words, talk about safe words, establish what they are. You can use plain English communication, I think that is a really smart thing to do. Red, green, and yellow, really, really good to use for me personally. Red means everything is terrible, please stop right now, never ever do this again. Yellow means not really feeling this, slow down, communicate with me. Green means this is totally awesome, keep doing what you're doing. Different doms do have different styles of play and they have different interpretations of what different safe words mean, so sometimes people don't agree with uh, my definitions of safe words, always make sure to tell people this is how I think of these particular safe words and in my mind that is what they mean. So make sure you talk about safe words and if you're having a scene that you've negotiated and it's not going well and you're just not feeling it, you can use red or you can use plain English to tell them what's going wrong. So maybe, for example, you were thinking, man, this over the knee spanking scene would be totally hot and I want to have wear, like, wear a blindfold and I want to wear a gag while it's happening and all that stuff and then you get all that stuff on and you're being spanked and that gag is making you really, really uncomfortable. Now, you're wearing a gag, so you're probably not going to be able to say this, the word red. And if you are wearing a gag or your hands are tied behind your back or whatever it is, if your ability to communicate is impaired in any way, make sure you set up other signals. For me and my dom, I tap twice somewhere on his body if I can reach it. And if I'm wearing a gag and I'm like, my hands are tied behind my back, I have something to hold that I can drop if I need to communicate with him that something is going wrong. And when you do, you can stop and communicate and tell them, you know, I really wanted to do this over to the spank scene. I thought it was going to be super hot, but this gag is not working out for me. Can we do something else instead? And they'll take out the gag because they're a good top and they'll listen to you, hopefully, and you can do something else. Now, if the entire scene is not working for you and you really need to stop, that is for sure when you use red and then you stop, you have aftercare. You decompress, you talk about what went wrong, you talk about what you didn't like, you talk about how things can improve in the future. Now that is really all I have to say about this particular topic. I hope you guys find this information helpful. Scene negotiation can vary a lot. Different people have different ways of handling scene negotiation. Again, especially if they are really experienced in a particular kind of play or they are playing with an established partner. So do keep that in mind. As always though, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I am always happy to answer questions. Of course, if you have any video suggestions as well, you can also leave those down below. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I also make videos twice a week. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, which you can also do down below. And until I see you next time, we have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.